all parking east of the railroad tracks. Now that means if you want to go down to the beach there, that's a nine to 10 block walk. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm not quite, and, and I know Long Beach Island is restricted to residents only. Um, part of the concern that I have is that there's going to be a question as to, can they do that? Um, yeah. in, in my district, one town has, has banned all parking on any street in the entire town. And I don't, yeah, and, and again, that, that's going to be this access question I wanted to talk to you all about. I'm sorry, Shaw, Senator O'Scanlan is having a hard time getting on. Um, let me and see. This, this is Christine Shipley. Um, Senator Kane also is saying it's an invalid link when he tried to log on. Okay, one second, I will send a new link. I'm on, Christine. Christine, I had to go and download that um, office, that whatever it was, the HD office suite. It gave me an invalid le um, link until I downloaded it, then it allowed me to get on. Okay, I'll recommend that to him. I downloaded it also. Okay, um, hold on a second. And um, let me just call him. Sorry, technology, just when we were saying we were getting the hang of it, and we're not. <laughs> let me just see. Well, believe it or not, the state computers can't do this. Hi, Senator. Um, I have you on speaker right now. Are you in that? You have to hit launch if you don't have that HD suite. Can you hit launch? If not, I'll just no. put you on speaker. Yeah, I tried that. It's not working. So um, I, I, thought, I thought it was just a Zoom call, like the thousand others we've done. It is. It's support. supposed to be. Yeah, I got Senator Thompson on, Senator um, Singer, and a couple others. So, um are you, should were, were there email addresses specified? I'm using my personal yeah. email. Address. Is it my Senator O'Scanlan email address? Which other one could it have used? Is it is it email specific? No. Is it Shaw? Can you which email would you like her to try and send the link to again? So he registered himself, or someone registered himself. Uh, Senator Kane. Hey, uh, Declan. The email came through on May 12th at uh, 10.08 a.m. Yeah. Hey, Boop, did you get the check yet? Ha! <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. First of many. Is Thank that your unemployment check? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just... Uh, there's always something. All right, and Shaw. I'm send, Shaw, sending you... Um, the senator's text. Maybe you could send that to him. Yeah, um, Declan, you should have it. It's on. It's on the email chain to your private. Uh, to your private FSD. I'm sorry. Where did it come from? Just give me some identifying thing there. It came from. It came from Christine Shipley at 10:08 a.m. on May 12th. I'm gonna already resend it. Just one second. Because I had to go back and pick it up. Hey, sorry about that. Hi, Joe here. I'm having the same trouble. I, I just can't get on the Zoom, so I'm going to just uh, call it. All right. Well, we do have Senator Kane, and I uh, Senator Scanlon Shaw is sending it to you again. Oh, Scanlon as well? Okay. Yes, please. Oh, Scanlon, put the dog on. I'm going to just leave you on speaker for I'm going to, Senator, I'm just going to leave you on speaker for now. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, cause I do want to, I do want to start. And first I, uh, I see we have several, um, we have, uh, Senator Kane, Senator Thompson, Senator Singer, Senator O'Scanlan. I know I saw Senator Bucco, uh, Senator Bateman staff is here. Um, Panaccio's here. Oh, and Senator Panaccio is here. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Any other elected official? Okay. Well, first, I, I just want to thank you all very much um, for being on this call. I don't need to tell you how impacted the restaurant, hotel, hospitality industry has been um, during this pandemic. And I truly appreciate the outreach. Senator Scanlon and I are on this email chain. By the way, happy belated birthday, Senator. Um, and, uh, um, you know, and, and, all of you have really reached out and I, I appreciate it so much because it is going to take a lot and every day that 
we stay closed is just more restaurants that are not going to be able to return because they have to still continue to pay things like rent and mortgage, um, you know, utilities. So, you know, understanding that the health and welfare of the citizens of New Jersey has got to come first. I, I, I as well as the industry understand that. Um, we do have to understand the real consequences. On May 13, uh, March 13th, over 80% of all restaurant workers and hotel workers were laid off and we're the state's largest private sector employer. So that probably equals or equates to a lot of the people that are on the unemployment, um, that are getting unemployment now. So the quicker we can get our industry back up makes financial sense to obviously the state and the financial welfare of the state. Um, but we do want to do it in a, in a clear fashion. In a, in a safe fashion, which is why we submitted that plan. And I know Senator Kane, and I believe many of you got it. So this is the plan that, you know, we feel will transition our industry um, back to opening in a safe manner. So I thank you. We're going to go over some of that. But first, I just wanted to turn it over to Senator Kane for any opening comments. Great. Well, well, thank you, everybody on the call, for investing in New Jersey. You've employed people. You've, you've made people's memories what they are in the state. So no, no one first and foremost, thank you for your persistence. Thank you for your investment and thank you for your strength. You coming together with that plan, I think really allowed this and, and Mary Lou's been great in communicating it because you all have, have really been driving and uh, leading the conversation, making sure that New Jersey comes back in a responsible and safe way. And so I wanna thank you for that. Um, you've got obviously important members of my caucus who are on the, uh, on the call who have been leading this conversation as well from an economic growth perspective from uh, making sure the state comes back in a consistent way. And I want to thank all of the senators who are here uh, on this phone call today uh, because they're the ones who are really leading the charge in this from a, from a legislative perspective and making sure that the policies are, are right, right headed um, coming out of trend. So thank you to everybody who's on the, on the call today. Is Tom wearing a bathing suit? You, you are, you are. Oh, Senator Testa, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, so, you know, I think we wanted just to go over, uh, many of you have gotten, we submitted four plans to the governor's office and to members of the legislature. Our safe dining uh, for the restaurant industry, our safe stay for the hotel industry, um, safe celebrations for our wedding and banquet venues, and safe play for our amusement parks and attractions. Mm -hmm. um, again, just wanted to talk with you through this because, you know, one of the things that's so important is timing. And just like we closed down, we cannot just flip the switch either and reopen. We have getting employees back and getting supply chains back and you know food and it's not going to be easy but we do need notice and that is one of the things and and again anybody who wants to kind of chime in and this is to be a conversation notification is going to be important we can't you know non-essential business opened with like two-day notice they they don't know how to do that restaurants we can't we can't open with two-day notice we need to know and if it's not going to be until after memorial day that's great but if it's going to be Memorial Day, we need to know today. Um, we needed to actually know last week. So however you can relay that, that it's not just the getting open, it's getting notified that I think is, is going to be so important. Um, and, and how do we do things like outdoor dining? I'm hearing that there's going to be rumblings that outdoor dining will be allowed, but then I'm hearing that, oh, that's not for a long time, you know, because we're going to meet New York City. Well, if that happens, we're not going to be opening until August. So can you provide any insight into that? We're happy to push that. I mean, like, like you said, um, you know, at the, the, you know, I was talking to um, an individual down in South Jersey who was in the, um, in the you know, entertainment, and he was, like, like you, was, was saying, all we need to know is, are the beaches going to be open in June? Because you can't, I know you can't even advertise until anything, right? Until you know, have that type of predictability. And so, so we understand the importance of communication. I know my caucus will continue to push it, but the, you know, you're right. You, people, he needs to know, the governor needs to know 
that's going to take weeks to ramp up and and you all need to, that type of knowledge but if you to have that certainty uh, we'll, we will push that in that yeah. communication and if any other member of our caucus wants to chime well, in on that great. I, I just think that if i might say you know you know we, we've had difficulty with with the governor on understanding that first of all nobody's making anybody dine out nobody's making anybody go to a hotel these are people unaware of and, and have that understanding and and the other aspect of it is that the industry can do it safely. It's it's not, first of all, outdoor dining is not a problem. You can certainly separate it. Um, my concern is that if we don't start to to make plans, it, everything, in other words, for example, talk about events. People want to book events, you've got to give them some notice. Um, and but but some of the things that are difficult is, for example, take the golf courses. They can't even have their halfway house open. Which is which is not dining in. It's it's self. It, you know, it's it's you pick it up and you eat it. Um, the boardwalk. I'm hoping this weekend, though, the outdoor uh, food stands will be able to be. Uh, no, no one can give us that answer yet. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, and that's what I. You know, I know he's going to be making a bunch more announcements, but the but the industry who is that it's pertaining to should be notified that this is going to happen and i and i think that um, and i don't know if any oh, senator go ahead yeah and um senator kane i'm assuming you were talking about curtis uh you know when you were talking about that individual in south jersey uh you know there's another individual but curtis but curtis echoed it there's another I mean, yeah okay you know and you know all the people that i've spoken to that are in the industry and look i worked in the re restaurant industry growing up you know th what the governor doesn't understand is the is the ripple effect of all of his decisions and because, you know, not, you know, he's an ivory tower elitist, he doesn't understand that a restaurant, you know, needs some, some lead time to talk to their distributors to get product in their restaurant, in their walk-in, so that they can actually serve people food. I mean, you know, and Senator Singer, to echo your comments, I mean, it's, it's patently ridiculous to think that you can play a golf course and not have, you know, a sandwich outside. Um, I can tell you Atlantic City Country Club's halfway house is open. Um, so I just played there on Friday. But, um, <clears throat> you know, Mary Lou, I, I think at least the South Jersey Chamber of Commerce, they've been echoing your sentiments. I've been working closely with Christina Renna there. Uh, she and I grew up together. But it's falling on deaf ears, unfortunately. <clears throat> the, the regional approach that we were hoping to take for reopening the state of New Jersey, with legislative one accounts for less than 1% of all COVID-19 cases in the state. And if you have if you take away the long-term care facilities and the travesty that has occurred there, we're less than one half of 1% of all cases in the state of New Jersey, yet the governor is afraid to allow, you know, South Jersey to open up. It, it absolutely makes no sense, but I'm sure that myself and the rest of the caucus will be, are confident to carry your message, and, you know, to echo the sentiments of our leader, Kane. Yeah, I mean, because here's one example of, you know, where, <clears throat> policy doesn't meet what is being said. So we had that sanitation bill for hotels where we wrote a very comprehensive, very strict sanitation guideline. And um, we, and then there was a bill that was introduced and just passed um, that would require housekeeping to go into every hotel room every day to clean, whether the, cut, whether the guest wants it or not. And it doesn't make any sense because you're forcing more in contact. You're requiring more people to be behind a front desk. Um, and so, you know, it's being done and saying that this is gonna be sanitation guidelines where it's really doing the opposite, it's very dangerous. And so as these bills go through, I implore you to look at the industries, wh whether it's the hospitality industry or the manufacturing. Oh, by the way, we voted against that bill. You know that. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we were all good on um, that one. But to encourage them to look at the industry who put these plans together, because we know what we can and can't do. Um, so, so I just that. And <clears throat> the other question I have, and I don't know if anyone, and Senator um, O'Scanlan and I are on this text group of outdoor dining, and it seems as though some municipalities are allowing it, and others are not. Meaning that if I go to takeout and then I sit down, and I can eat at their tables. I'm not getting table service, but then we're told that that cannot happen. So, you know, I don't know if anyone can provide any insight. We're told that cannot happen. 
I, I think I, I don't think that can happen. Part of the problem we have here, and this is where we need the industry to help us with the governor is, he can't allow every municipality to make up their own rules. And that's what's happening down up and down the shore. I realize that, that municipalities have a certain power, but when you have, I said to you, I have certain towns that are doing parking, certain towns that are doing other things on their own because it's local. When, for example, not all the businesses on, on, on the boardwalk are commercial. Yeah. And, and they're the ones that are getting, you know, take, take, as I said, in Point Pleasant Borough, uh, uh, beach is the issue there. Bank owns most of the beach there, and yet people can't park on the beach. Yeah. Senator Scanlon, you had something to say? Thanks, Mary Lou. I appreciate it. Uh, look, guys, I think the question is regarding this specific issue. Uh, do we wait for what we know will be the minutia uh, and, and plan the 25%, et cetera, pronounced from on high as the state? Yeah. Or do we tell the governor, let the locals? I work together and coordinate and, and, and counties. You know what will happen then? Things will happen very quickly because it will go to the lowest common denominator of restriction very quickly. You're not going to go to the, the highest carrying level. Of you will see dominoes fall when businesses in one town are allowed to do something that another is. That town is going to have to relent very quickly. So that's the direction I'm going in. I don't, I, I don't want to sit around for weeks pushing the government administration, which we've seen be a disaster, uh, to come up with rules for everyone. Uh, for me, it's time to let the market decide within certain reasonable 30,000 foot guidelines of separation. Yeah. I'm pushing all the municipalities in my district and Monmouth County to allow outdoor dining so they can get so restaurants can get to 100 or more than 100 percent capacity. Streets, let it be parking lots, and have at it. We'll figure it out within within two three weeks. It'll be figured out. It's it'll be two three months. <clears throat> we figures out. Even the local 20 percent capacity, which they can't exist at anyway. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from. That's what I'm encouraging my officials to do. And, and these these restaurant tours. We got about 30 of them. Uh, across all aspects of, of the restaurant industry, and, and Mary, Mary was right. We all heard it. They're dying. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. And listen, if any of you have questions, we do have the chat feature. So, um, if you have a question for one of the senators, but you know, yeah, I mean, it is it is very difficult because we do like the uniformity um, of you know the state, so that our multi-unit operators. You know, I see Amy Russo who owns Toast. Um, in Montclair and Red Bank and Asbury, you know, to comply with three different things is tough. But yeah, if we're not going to be able to open, um, you know, how, especially now we hear that New York City is closing their beaches, we know there's going to be a huge influx to our shore communities. And, you know, they're going to want places to eat. And, you know, can we let them eat on the beach? For those locations that are situated on the beach, can they take food and go to the beach and eat? We have to do something with them. And they're going to be upset when they come down and, you know, they can't use the bathrooms and they can't find something to eat. Does anybody else share my concern that uh, Friday, I think the governor had the edict voting by mail, which is 50 days away. That, you know, he's not going to let people exercise the right to, uh, you know, to get in small groups to go to polling places. He's certainly not going to exercise people's uh, right to, you know, to go into a restaurant. So does anybody else share that concern? Yeah. Well, if you're talking about again the, the uh, primary there, uh, in fact, people may have not realized, but anybody that goes to vote at, at a polling place will have to utilize a provisional ballot because they will have received a mail in ballot. And so they won't really be able to use the machines. Because um, they're mailing, they're mailing uh, vote by mail ballots to every registered Republican and every registered Democrat. So since you've received one, again, you'll have to take a provisional ballot rather than vote by machine. Um, so here's a question, though. I see that someone says, I have a question about outdoor dining and bathroom usage. I mean, um, for Amy Russo. Can you unmute Amy? Hi. Sorry about that. Um, 
Yeah, my question, and I, I'm on that thread that he was just discussing, as you know. So my questions are, what's going on with the outdoor dining? Are we going, because I'm seeing some places, I mean, Montclair, right up the block from me, I saw table service being off. Hello? Oh, you're. Is it at the borough discretion? Is it at a state mm -hmm. level? Then I also had um, questions on, is it against this executive order to actually let customers come in and use our bathrooms? Are we not allowed to do that? Because, you know, we're, we are operating almost like a giant concession stand on Cookman Avenue right now in Asbury. And as they open the beaches, if there, you know, there's not a lot of places to eat. And then on top of that, there's not a lot of places to use the bathroom. So what's the situation there? It's my understanding that, and I go back to what they've done with the golf courses. If you allow someone to use the bathroom after they leave the bathroom, you must clean it every time, which makes it virtually impossible to let them use it. Go ahead, Senator. We have, seen, we have seen one good sign regarding bathrooms in that they recognize the disaster that happened at the parks. And they are allowing bathrooms to open uh, at parks now. So they've at least cracked the door open to that. But they also are requiring that they be cleaned after every use, too. I mean, okay. that becomes ludicrous. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, I think that these are the types of things that, you know, you have an industry, 27,000 restaurants and 1,500 hotels that want to do the right thing. Um, you know, we've had an issue now where we've had the outdoor cocktail. Thank you, by the way, um, Senator Scanlon and, and those of you that voted for it. Cheers. But now we're seeing that um, the ABC is going in and writing fines um, for taking pictures of, you know, because they're trying to promote it. So we had one member who was taking a picture of their cocktail and wanted to put it on Facebook to promote it. And the ABC went in and is finding them. Um, but Mary Lou, can, can you get, get me that? Uh, I need to talk to that. Restaurant okay. We're, we're going we're gonna to go to bat on that today. Okay, because there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, 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 and not just the other, there's just so many different things where we see the ABC going in and they're, and I did speak to the director, but they're, they're finding people for not having gloves and masks on when the protocol hasn't been written. Now we know for front of house, you have to have gloves and masks on, but it is very dangerous for people working behind a grill to have a mask on. It's, it's dangerous, it, you know, um, and, and they're getting fined. So, this is where you're start, and you know I I think it's that the, some of the state police is going in there helping the ABC, and they don't understand. So now we have this mishmash of cross government agencies, um, really doing oversight on an industry that they don't understand. And Mar Mary Lou, with regards to the ABC, they they released a bunch of uh, ABC agents, for lack of a better term, throughout Cape May County, and were demanding that on closed businesses, mind you calling up the owners of those closed businesses, having them open, and then fining them. One, one of our members got fined, one of my constituents got fined because he had apparently a bottle of liquor out that when he personally drank from, when he was cleaning his business, and it, because it wasn't stored behind the bar, they gave him a fine. Yeah. I mean, on a, on a closed and business. It was, and it was a closed business. Outrageous. Yeah. Crazy. Outrageous. Crazy. Um, I have Sharon from Steel Pier. Hi, Sharon. Hi also one of my closest friends. I love her to pieces. Um, I'm the marketing director for Steel Pier in Atlantic City. Is there any information on the opening of the casinos? Also, are there any new grants that will be available for small business? Well, we know we have our small hospitality um, that we got the 100 million and thank you all for voting um, on that. I think we have to see about how we make that open to more, um, increase that number. But is there anything, Senators, on that question? No. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's no big deal because because really the casino industry isn't particularly significant in New Jersey, so it's no big deal that they got their asylum. It's just fine. No, you know, part of the problem we're, we're facing, and why we're we're having such a difficult time, is no one is saying very clearly. No one has to go anyplace. No one is making you go to the restaurant. Nobody is making you go to the hotel. Nobody's making you go to the casino. That becomes your personal choice. So when they talk about protecting people, those people at risk, those people are uncomfortable, don't go. But what's happening is the other 85 or 90% of the public, 
that wants to go are being locked out. And for some reason, we can't get that through the governor's office. Yeah. Um, so here's another one. And, and Patrick, this is exactly right. And, and we're going to talk about, you know, what, what's been done. And looking at the future, um, you know, I've heard from when I've, we've advocated on minimum wage or paid sick leave. And, you know, I, I hear you guys are always screaming, the sky is falling. Well, the sky really has fallen on our industry. And it's not about the fix that's gonna happen in the next four or five months. This is going to be a two, three, five year recovery for the, for the restaurant and hotel industry. And when we put together policies and legislation and regulations, you know, I mean, I, I know you um, are always with us, you know, you guys are huge champions in the small business community, but to remember that you know, this is that, you know, when we're up and running doesn't mean that everyone's profitable again. I mean, there's going to be some people that are never going to come back, but those that are, do, you know, what can we do to assist those small business operators to help to make sure that in two, three years, when the minimum wage goes up again, all the way to 15, that we can survive. Well, what are you, Taylor, you have advocates here. You have allies here. Uh, right. but they, uh, on the other side of the aisle, I and the, look, Senator Sweeney's been a, a, an ally in some of this, but it's Senator Sweeney's bills that are the 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 ridiculous micromanaging of uh, hotel rooms that you just mentioned. Uh, there is a lack of understanding on the other side of the aisle what it means at all to run a business, uh, and, and a complete lack of understanding that government can't do it. Yeah, it's, it's disgraceful. I mean, we had a great call with. Senator Sweeney right before that bill and um, you know I was I was disappointed um, you know another thing is he's he's you know, had been helpful but again you know how do we best advocate through the governor's office I mean we're on you know I have so many members are on the recovery task force and things like that but what is our best way just to try and encourage um, you know and with your assistance that this industry is so excellent at, at, at cleanliness and sanitation. How do we say and rest and rest and reassure them that we are ready for a slow opening using our outdoor space and expansion of parks and, you know, I, I just don't know what to do. I think, I think we have to focus on is this, it's all, I mean, it's in your best interest to keep your family safe, your consumers safe, right? And your employees safe. Right. I mean, anybody who has an experience when you ramp up will see that going very clearly. But we need your voices echoed in this. This needs to be not just the, the potentially 15 people who are on this phone call but, you know, from the state legislative side, but we also need to make sure that it includes and, and Christine Shipley, the executive director uh, of our caucus. But we also need to make sure that, that you echo in every single zip code. I mean, if you're in Montclair, you should have your senators and your assembly people you know, should be bombarded with emails from your local employees. You know, this should be every single zip code should be writing to the governor and saying it at every end, end of the employment spectrum within the restaurant and the hospitality industry. And this needs to be a strong grassroots effort. There are po grassroots things popping up around the state in a variety of different ways. But I think having the regular people, quote unquote, I mean, the common, we said the common concerns of our constituents, I mean, that needs to be a very public and facing approach and say, we need the jobs back. We also need, nobody's going to, come back, come, going to come back to a amusement or a hospitality or a restaurant if they don't feel that it's safe and clean. And I think we need to emphasize that people who are employing people and people who are employed by people understand that probably better than the governor does right now. <laughs> so I, I would say you need to be aggressive in, in that, in that, in that conversation. And it just can't be, you know, it's gotta be aggressive from everybody who works within your industries. Yeah. I did say individually. It can't just be, it should not just be a, a mass email. I mean, right. the more individual emails that you get into an office that show they can be on the same topic, but they should be, this is how this is impacting me. And, and trust me as an employee to keep people safe because it's in their interest to keep, if you, if you keep your employees safe, their, their families are safe. We all have the same common goal. Yeah. Hey, Tom? Yeah. 
you know how like during my campaign, we really worked with those minutes with Mike and they were very effective. What if we had each one of the members here talk about their business, you know, for a minute or two and how, how obviously they're an industry leader. They, un they understand what it takes to run their business far better than you, me, or any government bureaucrat in the Murphy administration and how they're personally being affected by this and how many people rely on their, you know, on their employment from them. How many people now want them open? We want them open. They want to be open and they want to do it safely, effectively, and efficiently so that they can ramp up to what is normal, not this new normal that we keep hearing out of the Murphy administration. Um, yeah. They're having those hearings, I know, on healthcare or education, and they said they're going to bring in the business community. And can you oh. offer any insight on how we would kind of be able to get involved in that? Mary Lou, who was your question to? I'm sorry. <laughs> anybody, Tom, Senator Kane or, or Mike or anybody who can answer it, because I know they're doing these public hearings, but I just don't, you know, are they going to bring the small business? And if so, how do I get my members in there to talk to the point that you were just making? You know, I think you even start before that, Mary Lou. I think I think you need to have your your, your folks attack social media. We, we know for a fact that Governor Murphy succumbs to pressure because he says he doesn't succumb to pressure. So he feels the need to address it. We know for a fact that he absolutely does succumb to pressure from the legislature and from the business community. I would just do a social media blitz on Twitter and Facebook. I don't know that Instagram is as effective, but between Twitter and Facebook from each one of your members, here's my place of business. Here's, here's our plan. We want you to be, come here, feel safe. You know why? Because we're going to keep you safe because exactly what our leader Kane just said, they want to protect their, their staff, they want to protect their patrons, and they want to protect themselves and do it in a, in a safe manner that it still can be profitable and safe for everybody to get back to normal. I, I, I agree with Mike. I think the those that public hearing should be the end of the conversation, not the beginning. Of the I have another question. Again, not sure if you have answers, but um, bowling alleys are a big part, and they can do social distancing. Um, and they've, I've submitted their plan, they've submitted their plan. Do you, I mean, you probably don't have an answer, but you know, there are 100 bowling alleys, 1,000 employees. You know, they, is there any idea or anything that they can, you know, that any insight that you have for them? I, I, I would treat it the exact same way as any, any other consumer facing industry. You know, they, they've got the exact same. You know, they've got different products and the different interaction, and there's got to be a way that they can show that they can keep it clean. And but I'd be public in your and, and you know, as, as Michael said, and others on the call have said, you know, I think the more towards the public facing you are in these arguments, the more people will feel safe. Because right now there is a split in the state right now between people who feel safe, or it's, and as Bob Singer says, you know, there are people who may feel unsafe, and therefore because for whatever reason, they don't have to participate in these sectors of the economy. But the more people start to see, you can change the conversation from, <clears throat> we, we can only be safe in the bubbles of our homes to one where you, are, you can be safe in a public economic setting. The more we start to drive that conversation and prove that that's a reality, I think the better that is for, for ch changing the governor's mind going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you've got to capitalize on the information that you've already put together. You've already put together a plan yeah. that shows how you can safely and quickly reopen. Um, I, I was on a call today with the Morris County Chamber in which um, I participated with some experts, um, scientists that, um, and industrial scientists that um, have looked at the risk factors associated with different industries. And based on their analysis of across the board, the, econo the economy across the board and the various sectors of the economy, they determined that 80%, 80% of the businesses that are still closed are less risky than the businesses that are open. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Grocery stores are open, Walmart, Home Depot, all of these high trafficked areas have been operating now for two months without incident, 
we've been and the curve is flattening. So when you've got 80% of the of the economy still shut down and the highest risk aspects of the economy operating, it makes no sense to continue to keep that 80% closed. But you can only open them under certain protocols which you've established. So I think you've got to promote those protocols and I think you've got to make sure that that the administration understands that you represent a boatload of people in New Jersey that are depending on reopening. And those people vote. Yeah. Well, let me just share one thing as a shore legislator. Without the opening of restaurants, there is no shore business. <laughs> Bingo. People yeah. cannot come down here and, and, they, and, and they plan to pick up food on the way down. They, they buy food while they're down here. They stay later and have dinner whatever may case may be, if there's no food available, if restaurants are not available, we do not have a shore season. Yeah. Including yep. summer rentals. Who'd rent, the, who'd rent the place down for the shore that can't go out and eat? Yeah. And what, here's a ma another major problem is the, for us is um, childcare because daycares are closed. That's going to be a problem for any small business that are trying to get back with their employees because schools are closed. There's no daycare facilities open. So now, you know, you call mom and dad back to work. It's, you know, they, what are they going to do? You know, you can't exactly bring your toddler behind in, into a kitchen. Part of our frustration is we've asked them about the summer camps. People are calling my office continually saying, are the summer camps going to open for the same reason? If kids can't go to summer camp, where, where day camp, where do they, how do the parents go to work? That's exactly right. So, um, Elizabeth, yes, we, we have a call actually today regarding the wedding industry because we know that's a huge problem. How are the large wedding, ba uh, the banquets? Um, we have a, a list of about 40 venues that are going to be doing a call today. That's our safe celebration plan. And um, Yeah, we're, we're getting calls into our district offices too with that, trying to get some sort of, you know, a lot of uncertainty in the, you know, that wedding. Plan. And you talk about timing. I mean, you got... Excuse my language, but you got a lot of pissed off brides <laughs> that are trying to figure out is their August wedding going to happen, and um, you know, and, and their wet and the wedding. I mean, this sounds silly, but it to them it's not, and to the three hundred family and friends, it's not silly. But how do we get them open, or at least tell them, I'm sorry, you're not going to open until um, January, or you're not going to open until. I mean, not January, until July or August. And that notification for that industry is, is really critical because it's not just the business owner. It is... It's the band. It's the yeah. families. It's every, and the issue that other people are now running into is even the backup days are now getting a, a problem. So if you're getting that inconsistency, it's, it's impacting families. Now, it looks like... Hold on. Uh, Senator O'Scanlan had something. Sorry. Go ahead, Senator. I had a pissed off bride. 14 years later, still pissed off. You're not going to try that problem. Oh, well, that sounds like you need like a marriage counselor, so that's not for us. <laughs> okay. I, I'm hearing that the governor is going to announce at 1 o'clock a um, couple different things. Uh, outside batting cages, private tennis clubs, driving ranges, stuff like that will be opening up. Uh, municipal pools will be allowed to open up. I'm also hearing he's, he's looking at next phases. He's going to have a three-stage process for opening up the state. It's going to include um, first stage will be curbside retail car sales. Second stage includes outdoor eating at restaurants and bars. Third stage is indoor eating. Social distancing um, stuff will be continued to push. Um, but it seems he's still looking at social distance will be, will be still be the, will be the new normal until a vaccine is available. Whoa. So he's using back until a vaccine is available language, it seems to me. Now, I should probably say that's off the record, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, I'm sorry. So you were saying second phase two is outdoor seating? It says first step will be curbside retail car. Second, it will be outdoor restaurant bar. Third stage will be indoor. But he's not. There's no. I'm, there's no sense of timeline. There's no sense of. I'm just getting sort of very, very brief top lines. So. Um, so that and, and this does not flow with 
they, the regional approach that our neighboring states were doing. So you have Connecticut that's doing outdoor uh, in two days. Um, Pennsylvania is doing it in locations. Um, Delaware, I think, is getting ready to open. New York City, we know we're not. So how is that the regional approach to this plan? I mean, that's- Well, he hadn't, followed, he hadn't followed a regional, he hadn't followed those guidelines or, or nobody else in the other five or six states has followed those timelines, um, right? They set their, their own protocols and Cuomo is doing it regionally, Pennsylvania is doing it regionally, a number of others are doing it regionally. And he's not been consistent with following the regional approach. And that's the type of thing that, you know, Bob and, and Michael and a variety of other individuals, both in the South and, and in the West, have said, you can treat certain areas of the state differently than other areas. I mean, I, I come from Union County. I live in Union County. I understand that Union County would be treated, you know, if you had that component, it would be treated a bit differently than other places in the state. But that's, um, so, so a number of people in the caucus have been really strong on pushing the, the regional focus and the regional open. So the so indoor dining will be the first phase and that's when there's a cure or a vaccine? Uh, no, no. Oh. The indoor dining, what it seems to me is the social distancing protocols are, are on until, that's a separate issue. The social I got Thing. He's, def he's defining, he's extending the deadline on social distancing until a vaccine is, is available. Oh my God. There may never be a vaccine. We don't know that. Oh my God. The, the last effective vaccine took four years to develop. But, but, but our problem is that, that and where we have this fight, he has no faith that the industries who want to keep their, their number one, their employees safe, and number two, their customers safe, can handle these things. And if you take a look at the way he did the golf course. These are doing this weekend and then we'll know what's going to open. Which is, out, which is outdoors, how foolish their, their, their rules and regulations are. It makes, and he won't even copy other states. In other words, some of the states, for example, on the golf course, allow foursomes. One, you can only have one person driving, the other person walks behind with their clubs on the back of the cart. And both carts, you only have two, you have a foursome, but not, but not all together. He won't even do that. Other states have ordered dividers between the, the driver and the passenger so you can have a foursome. He isn't even looking at that stuff. So for the members on this call, not the legislative members, but my members on this call, um, I think that, you know, obviously we did that call to action, but I think, you know, we're gonna have to do specific outreach to the governor and we'll create, we'll, we'll do a Twitter thing, but you know, and, and senators, you're right. That that's how we're going to do it is, is with the pressure because I, you know, I look at Amy and, you know, I'm looking at a lot of my members here, you know, I would be very comfortable going into their place, you know, today. Now, would I be comfortable going in if it was jam packed and there was, you know, 60 people waiting and I'm crammed in? No, but you know, we can do it. And I think that that's the message that we need to, to talk about and, and, and push. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but neither are we. We don't want 150% capacity in any of our places. And I, I don't know, like I had a rant that went a little bit viral last week, but we actually can keep people safe and reopen and not want people to die. All of those things can coexist. Yeah. I, that's all we need to get across. Like, I don't really get it. I, we're going to wait for a vaccine. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I think the bigger joke is if you walk through the stores that are open right now, you know what the largest population I see in those stores are? Older people. Thank you. I mean, yeah, this, don't give a rat's ass. Like, this, let people eat if they want to eat. I mean, the, the answer is that people Sorry. have to make their own judgments, period. <laughs> and they don't have to come. You're not forcing them to come to your restaurant, you're not forcing them to go to a, a wedding. The, the wedding people that I know and, and that have called me, for example, in my district is a large facility, Eagle Oaks. Those people are going to go bankrupt. They cannot continue to carry these places. Their, their taxes are, are, are not being held. They're not being told enough to pay their property taxes. Um, Declan, I'm sorry, Declan, you had a question? Well, not a question, actually, just uh, for your members. Uh, there's two key messages. One is that you can handle it. I, Plan, let's go with that. Number two, the urgency of this. That if we wait, if we all successfully pressure the governor to start reopening the Memorial Day weekend, this is not our pressure, we're going to end July, quite frankly. But uh, your industry in particular, the 
urgency needs to be communicated. That every day they wait, there's hundreds of thousands of businesses in your category that will not reopen, that are making crushing decisions about their bankruptcy. We need to make sure that that's part of the Well, I thank you. Um... And I, I'm hearing, I'm seeing all the, the chatter. So we are going to put together something that, you know, we've, we did the action alert where, you know, we were communicated all the time, but I think now it is time. He's on Twitter. Um, I, I don't know who's on Twitter more, him or, or the president. So And please, please it. include us, please include us in that social, um, in that social media stuff that you're doing, because we can then support you right back. Um, if you include us, and let us know where you're headed. Um, we're more than, than um, I think, ready to, to just get our shoulders behind you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Senators, I, I want to thank you so much for your time. We will certainly keep you in the loop. I have all of your cell phone numbers now. <laughs> so I don't know if that's good for you or not, but um, you have mine. And uh, if you hear anything or there's anything you do need from us, just let us know. Uh, we've always appreciated your support. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just Keep thank you. We're on your side. Keep pushing. Amen. Keep pushing. Stay safe, thank everyone. You. And remember to take out. <laughs> Almost every day. And, and tip. And tip. <laughs>